like the new opening. Thanks very much. Hope you had a great weekend. J.D. here. Good to have you on board. We thank you, as always, for taking some of that time of yours to spend it with us here on the program where intellectual anarchy is encouraged and nurtured for now. Jesse producing, Don producing, dialing it up. Mike screening the calls, emails at the website. And the poll question up there for you today. Child custody lawsuits are now expanding their scope to include the issues of the child's obesity, diet, and exercise and the ability of an obese parent to perform their functions. What do you say to this? 3% of you say, well, these are legitimate issues. 24% says these are parent-child issues. And 72% says, I worry where this all leads to. Answers leading there at the website or here at the number 800-876-4123. When I was reading this article about obesity and custody fights. This all is about the big creep of how creepy it is when do-gooders, politicians, activists want to get involved in every nook and cranny of the English muffins of our lives. Now, granted, there's an issue here where at some point a child's safety, uh, a child's future is something that just can't be left up for a flip of the coin. They're going to make it. They're not. They're going to be safe. They're not. They're going to be put forward to a life of uh, ruin because of uh, whatever it is they eat or don't do or don't exercise or wherever the the parent uh, is is not uh, doing what a parent is supposed to be doing. But it's showing up everywhere in every facet of our lives. These people are trying to tell us how to go about our lives. And I guess if our lives were better, if our lives were more productive, more fruitful, if we were richer, if we were more financially secure, if we were, if we were just something other than what we are, which is what we're supposed, you know, we would be a lot better off if people left us alone, left to our own desires and to our own dreams and to our own fortunes we would be way ahead than we are now government takes credit when we get ahead but never gets any of the blame when we fall behind we should be getting the credit we should be making decisions we should be succeeding or failing on our own which is part of the big creep of where we are in government today What bulbs we screw into the socket, what cars we drive, what food we eat, how we heat our homes, what temperature we heat our homes, when we drive, how much we drive, how much we pay for when we drive, when we can talk on a phone, when we can't talk on a phone. And now the issue of obesity is an issue that's being used in courts where they figured out how to pit one parent against the other with yet another tool in their arsenal where nutrition and obesity are now something else that they can fight about in court besides frequent flyer miles. And it's all about activism. It's all about how they, with the bully pulpit, they with the power, feel more and more empowered every day to just tell us what it is that we're supposed to do or say. I'll give you an example over the weekend. Herman Cain was on CBS's program with Bob Schieffer. Now, you know Herman Cain has the ad out there on the Internet that's gone viral, the campaign ad where the guy smokes at the end of it, and he was on Face the Nation. Now, when I was looking at all the audio that was available out there and how it was cut up, it was all cut up from the standpoint of Herman Cain saying, look, I'm Herman Cain. Let me be Herman and let this guy in the campaign be his own guy. I get that to a certain point. I'm me. You're you. I hope I'm a good me and I hope you're you're a good you. And then we all get better together. That's kind of like live and let live kind of a mentality. Let us be. Let us be about our own decisions and Let our own paths be determined by us, wherever that takes us, however long that takes us there. But what I didn't see in a lot of the audio that was played out there was the full exchange. You have to understand what happens today. People take something, whether it's the Herman Cain sexual harassment controversy and use it for their agenda, or it's the Kim Kardashian filing for divorce and using it for their agenda, 
or it's the obesity issue to use it for some diet whack job restaurants agenda. Everybody has an agenda out there. Now, Bob Schieffer gets on Herman Cain for this smoking ad that's on the Internet. And what I was really just thrown by was not just the activism of Bob Schieffer, but the hypocrisy of Bob Schieffer, who used to be a smoker, who's a cancer survivor himself, getting on Herman Cain and telling Herman Cain what to say to the audience and more disturbing was Herman Cain acquiescing to Bob Schieffer's mandate, tell people this, like Herman Cain is some kind of trained seal there to do the bidding of this clown, Bob Schieffer. It sends a signal that it's cool to smoke. No, it does not. Mark Block smokes. That's all that ad says. We weren't trying to say it's cool to smoke. You have a lot of people in this country that smoke. But what I respect about Mark as a smoker, who is my chief of staff, he never smokes around me or smokes around anyone else. He goes outside. He smokes on television. Well, he smokes on television. But there was no other subliminal message. Was it meant to be funny? It was meant to be informative. If they listened to the message where he said... America has never seen a candidate like Herman Cain. That was the main point of it. And the, 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 the bit on the end, we didn't know whether it was going to be funny to some people or whether they were going to ignore well, it or whatever the case may be. Let me just tell you, it's not funny to me. Okay. I am a cancer survivor right. like you. I am also. I had cancer that's smoking related. Yes. I don't think it serves the country well, and this is an editorial opinion here, to be showing someone smoking a cigarette. Uh, and and. You're the front runner now, and it seems to me as front runner, you would have a responsibility uh, not to take that kind of a tone in this. I would suggest that perhaps as the front runner, you'd want to raise the level of the campaign. We will do that, Bob, and I do respect your objection to the ad. And probably about 30 percent of the feedback was very similar to yours. It was not intended to offend anyone. And being a cancer, being a cancer survivor myself. I am sensitive to that sort of thing. Would you take the ad down? Well, it's on the Internet. We didn't run it on TV. And well, once, why don't you once, take it off the Internet? It's impossible to do now. Once you put it on the Internet, it goes viral. We could take it off of our website, but there are other sites that have already picked it up. It's nearly impossible to, take, to erase that ad from the Internet. Hey, have you ever thought of just saying to young people, don't smoke 400,000 people in America die every year from I, smoking related I will have no problem saying that and matter of fact we'll say it right now young people of America all people do not smoke it is hazardous and it's dangerous to your health don't smoke. I've, I've never smoked, and I have encouraged people not to smoke. And so it's I not a cool thing to do. It is not a cool thing to do. And that's, that's not what it was trying to say. Smoking is not a cool thing to do. All right. Wow. Take it off the Internet. Tell people now it's not cool. Like Herman Cain said, throw me another mackerel? Like he's, a, he's some kind of a circus act? You know what I would have done? I would have said, look, I don't smoke. But there's got to be somebody on this set, maybe one person with some stones that works at CBS that lives their own life. Does anybody here have a cigarette? Anybody in the studio have a cigarette? I would have lit a cigarette up right on the set and said, there, I'm smoking a perfectly legal FDA approved cigarette with taxes that go to fund the state children's health insurance program in America that politicians use to get reelected. And Bob, don't give me this crap about you being a cancer survivor. Like cigarettes were forced on you. Somebody jumped on your chest and stuffed them in your mouth and duct tape your mouth closed and you didn't have free will. You decided to smoke for yourself. You got cancer. You survived. Good for you. I'm glad you did. But this activism, you want activism, Bob? How about this? Why don't you bring on every politician, Republican and Democrat, and tell them to look right at the camera and say to the American people, it's not cool to bankrupt America. The Jerry Doyle Show. How about this one? It's not cool to cheat on your wife. Would you say that to the American people, Bill Clinton? If you're going to be an activist, be an activist. But apparently Bob Schieffer is just something else that begins with an A. You can fill in the hole for yourself. 800-876-4123. Join me. The Jerry Doyle Show.